Valorant, Riot Games' new tactical hero FPS, has just launched. And I'm seeing a lot of players who haven't played a game quite like it before. Hello everyone, today I'm going to be going over the mechanics of a tactical FPS like Valorant. I'm qualified to do this with my background in Rainbow Six, Overwatch, Paladins, and especially CSGO. If you just picked up the game and want to improve, are more experienced and want a few tips to take your game to the next level, or are brand new and want to know what Valorant is all about, you've come to the right place. The game plays like a cross between CSGO and Paladins more than Overwatch, with a couple of very key differences. Valorant has provided resources to help players understand how it works and learn it, and this is very clear from the start. This is the first high quality tutorial I think I've ever played in my life, which is incredible. It explains everything pretty well. I'll go over the mechanics and add a few things that the tutorial doesn't mention. Well, no time to waste. Let's get started. The mechanics of Valorant are going to be tough for a new player, so have some patience. First off, movement speed is slow, even slower than CSGO, and far, far slower than most modern FPS games. This takes a little while to get used to. If you are hit by an enemy, your feet all of a sudden become cinder blocks, which took me a long time to adjust to and is personally my least favorite mechanic. This means you really don't want to be caught out in the open because you probably won't be able to get away. The other problem for non-CSGO players is that you have to be standing still to accurately shoot. This is the main one. You can run around as much as you want while firing, but you'll likely run out of spare ammo before you get the guy. To counterbalance this, you can crouch, stand, or you can do what I prefer, which is counter strafe. Counter strafing is where you run left, then tap right. As soon as you tap that key, you are accurate and can shoot. It works the same way moving in the opposite direction. Give it a try. It takes a while to get used to, but you'll get the hang of it in no time. Once you get the basics down, you can make short, small steps left and right, which will be very difficult for your opponent to predict. Alright, now everyone's favorite. Aim. Headshots are key. Headshots can melt a target in one or two hits, especially since you can barely move when tagged. Being good in aim duels is essential. One of the things I saw early on that players could change easily for lots of improvement was crosshair placement. A lot of them aim down here, which is great for people who want to shoot opponents in the toes. These players have to constantly flick up to head height, which is a much more difficult shot than it has to be. Instead, just aim at head level already. See? Easy. Spray patterns are a thing in Valorant. Rather than random recoil, most of the bullets will have a learnable spray pattern, just like CSGO. However, what seems like the bottom third of the mag will have random recoil, and I felt as if the recoil as a whole wasn't as severe as CSGO. For those of you who haven't played CSGO, this means that when spraying, the bullets will not go where your crosshair is. They will go with the spray pattern. The practice range includes an area to learn spray patterns over here. I'm glad they included this for sure. Like I said, very impressed with the clear effort to make this game learnable. If you don't know the spray patterns yet, it's a good idea to tap or do short bursts until you do. For most of the weapons, the first two to three bullets are close to the crosshair. The other thing you'll want to do as you learn maps is pre-aim corners or pre-fire common spots, like this. It's much more difficult to kill someone who has shot at you before you've even registered their existence. Speaking of which, I was struck by how easy the maps were to learn. There are only a few lanes, and the maps are relatively small. They reminded me a lot of a mesh between CSGO, Battalion 1944, and a broom closet. If you want to learn the map quickly, just press M, and you can see the whole map. I would recommend playing different sites and moving around the map so you can learn it more quickly. However, due to the small size of the maps and the volume of footsteps, I don't think the defenders will be doing much pushing. Speaking of noise, we're going into our first advanced concept, silence. In Valorant, you can walk, which is bound to left shift by default. I was happy to see that footsteps are loud compared to shots, which was always an issue for me in CSGO. I like that they make it so you don't have to turn up the volume super high. However, that means that if you run everywhere, your opponents will hear you coming long before you get there, which will make you an easy target. Instead of running everywhere, you should walk when you can. If the opponents don't know where you are, this gives you an element of surprise, and also applies a lot of pressure and paranoia to the opponents. If a teammate is walking, it is common courtesy to also walk, and not give away their position. Another thing you should think about is trigger discipline. If an opponent walks by without seeing you, you may want to wait before you shoot in case more opponents come in, having assumed that their teammate cleared the area, which will lead to some easy multi-frags for you. Alright, let's talk about angles. In most games such as COD or one of my favorites, Battlefield 4, you are taught to run around and essentially hunt for enemies. 
Valorant is very different. Due to the objectives, enemies either have to attack or defend a site. This makes locations a lot more predictable. If you are defending, you should usually hold an angle. If you are attacking, you should usually push the site. We'll go into why shortly. Since the maps are so small, with so few entrances and exits to areas, there are only a few places an opponent can come from. It'd be beneficial for you to position yourself so that you only have to look at one spot at a time. This will make crosshair placement easier. In addition, vary your angles. You don't want to be too predictable, because that will make it far easier for opponents to find you. You'll get pre-fired and such. Don't play the exact same spot for more than a few rounds in a row, and ideally swap up your spot every round. This will help you keep that unknown aura that we talked about earlier. Unlike most other games, Valorant has an economy. I was absolutely floored by how well it works. The weapons mirror weapons from CSGO, but the way in which the economy works is so much better. You get money for winning a round, losing a round, and defusing and planting the spike. You'll typically have two kinds of rounds, buy and eco. Buy is when you have enough to buy everything you need, whereas an eco round is when you usually buy some and save enough to buy next round. None of this is revolutionary, but what I love is that they've added buttons to call for buy or ecos. Hopefully this will better team communication across the board. On top of that, as long as it's during the buy phase, you can sell back weapons that you just bought, so there's no more accidentally buying a scout instead of an AK. The only thing I have to say that's negative about this is that the weapons to me are all basically exactly the same. They all look the same and I can't tell which is which when they're on the ground. They're all named things like Phantom and Ghost, so it's hard to tell them apart by name. And on top of that, they all feel like they kind of have the same power to me. It doesn't seem like there's a lot more power from the more expensive weapons, as opposed to the less expensive weapons, but I'm sure I'll see that difference more as the game progresses. Nonetheless, I've picked a favorite, the Ghost, for its versatility, cheap price, and reliability. The other thing I would say about the economy is don't focus too much on the weapons, the abilities are very important too. Let's go into abilities. First off, I'm not that great at using the abilities, my timing was off a lot of the time. Enjoy this clip of me frantically panicking as I try to get off the camera while Brimstone approaches my position. Spoiler alert, escape does not get you off the drone, though I did try pressing that many times. I do love the abilities though. They're divided into four main categories, info, damage, flash, and smoke. An example of info would be the Recon Bolt by Sova. An example of damage would be my personal favorite so far, Raze, with her nades, which compensate for my lack of ability to clear corners. The only issue I have with her is that she has an auto-locking robot, which I don't think has a place in a game like this, but other than that, everything is really well balanced so far. An example of a flash is Phoenix's Curveball, which I love. Check out this clip to see the potential of it. And smoke would include Jet's Cloud Burst, which I also really like. In Overwatch and Paladins, I feel as if the abilities overshadowed the gunplay, but in this, it's certainly not true. I think there's definitely a good balance, and almost all of my frags were actually with the weapons. There's a couple of types of abilities. One is where you just get it every round for free, and you can use it once per round. If you get two kills, you can use it again. The other is you have to buy, and you can use those for however many times are allotted for that particular ability. Something I was pleasantly surprised by is that you can actually use all the different agents at the training range, so that when you buy them for the game, you actually know exactly what you're getting. This is one of my qualms with Rainbow Six, and I'm happy to see that it's not present here. I'd recommend trying them all out, like I did, and you can see exactly what you like. The last things I'm going to go over are a couple of common mistakes that I've been seeing that you can omit from your gameplay to have a better experience right off the bat. The first one's a fairly simple fix. Make sure that you manage time and actually play the sights and the spike. The most anticlimactic thing is a long drawn out battle followed by someone who doesn't plant or doesn't take a sight and runs off in some random direction. It's an easy way to lose a round if you're not careful. The second one is going to be crouch peeking. You're slow as it is already just running. Crouch peeking is so incredibly painfully slow that someone will see you way before you see them because when you crouch your body's much wider. The last thing I would say is use the abilities. The abilities are cheap, they're very effective, they offer a lot to your team, and they could make for some easy frags. I plan on putting out a video later focusing on the mechanics in movement of Valorant, especially counter strafing. I know that took me a long time to figure out when I learned it. You should also watch out for a second more strategy-based intro to Valorant. I think that would be very beneficial for some of the players who haven't played a 5 on 5 diffuse mode before. Learning all the nuances of strategy and timing can take a while, and if I can offer you a shortcut, I'd be happy to do that. So far, I've had a really good time with Valorant. I'm excited to see where this game goes.
and I can't wait to try out the rest of the champions. I hope this video was of value and helped you out. Best of luck and have a great day.